Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 where we've built another new type of science and also gone through and improved the uh, the flow of some of the other bits and pieces that are going on. So let's take a look at what's been going on over here. First up we've got the new advanced data cards being made here and I, I say being made here they've, they, they've kind of stopped right now. They are in, in theory being made but uh, we, we're having some supply issues. But in order to get this up and running we needed a number of different ingredients. So if we take, we'll take, take a quick look in here you can see that to make these requires bio scrubbers, immersion gears, lithium batteries, pylons, space platform platings and blank tech cards. Now Overall, this isn't too bad, not compared to, say, the matter science that I was doing last time. This is trivial compared to that. But there's quite a lot of stuff that goes into it. And whilst a lot of it is, is things we've already found and discovered, a lot of it wasn't in the right place for us to start making them here. Uh, so, for example, the bio scrubbers, well, they're, they're all being made out on uh, on Big Red in the, in the biologicals um, area. That's fine. Um, but they weren't actually on the main, uh, they weren't anywhere on a useful bus for getting at them. Immersion gear wheels are trivial to make. All you need there is immersion plates you can then stamp into them. But again, that's something we weren't doing in a particularly convenient place. The lithium batteries were actually really easy. Those were already on the space bus, so they would, okay, it could just grab those and bring them in. Uh, pylons we were already making, but not in a useful place. They were just being made to make the pylon substations. The space platform pl pl plating we needed to make as well. Um, and again, we're, we're, ma we're making this for part of the material science, but it's not, again not in the right place. And the data cards, sorry, the tech blank tech cards, they were easy because uh, we already had them on the space bus because they were there for the uh, the double plus good um, data cards as well. I, I did a little bit of thinking about what the best way to do this was, and I decided that well let's let's end, let's make these uh, scaffold platings over here. So we need to make the scaffolding and then the space plating here. That's fairly easy. It's just bring in a load of ingredients and shove them into the machines. They they don't take anything too difficult. That we and all of this stuff was already on the bus. So it was just a case of pulling it off and, and making those. The immersion gears, as I say, were just plates that get squashed into gears, and the blank tech cards could just be brought up from the bus as well. Um, and, and, and the, the pylons are, be, are the ones that are proving the trickiest at the moment. And that's not because they require anything especially complicated themselves. It's mostly sort of a throughput thing. So if we look at this pylon, it takes 16 holmium cables to make one of these. And that's quite a lot. And at the moment, our supply of those doesn't seem to be keeping up very well. I did have to put um, holmium cables and beryllium poles onto the uh, on, onto the space bus in order to get this up and working, uh, because currently they, they, we didn't have anything else that was using them off the bus. We were making them in a, in an area around here. There was a machine making them. We were bringing in um, holmium by delivery cannon and pl possibly and plastic somehow. I, I think that might have been delivery cannon as well, and making them on site for this area. And that was, I mean, it, it kind of worked, but we're trying to move away from bringing that stuff in. Well, we're trying to move away from delivery cannons entirely. And we're also trying to move away from making the intermediates up in space, because if we make them down on the ground, then we can use the, um, the, the productivity modules and get a lot more through. So we are bringing up large quantities of the Holmium cables. When we see, see a train will probably turn up here any moment now, and it'll, be, it'll have a load of them in it. But when it does, it drops them off, and they're sort of about, about this much of a belt's worth of them. And then they all disappear up here to be turned into, I believe, the... Uh, one of the solar panels was it yes up here we're making red solar panels and we're making them in huge quantity or trying to make them in huge quantities they're all getting snaffled away by uh, by various bots i assume um and these these also presumably take large quantities of the holmium cables well it's only four each so that's not so bad but it's it's ripping through them at quite a rate because we're trying to make a lot of these of these red solar panels so we're getting through a lot of them there the remaining few end up dribbling through here, where we can then turn them into the advanced or into the pylons to be turned into the advanced tech cards but it's Again, it's a, it's a throughput thing. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is increase the number that we're asking for over here. One of these will have the yes, there we go. So we're only asking for them 500 at a time. Let's ask for 5,000 instead. See what happens. That will probably that will that will definitely fill up a train with them down on Norvis. And okay, so here's some more stuff. So there you go. You see, there's some um, there's some holmium cables coming up in the train from uh, from Norvis. It's not an enormous number, but hopefully it'll be enough to. Um, that if we leave this thing ticking over for long enough, we'll start to get a decent supply through. I say that in this sort of tone of voice because I'm not entirely convinced that we will. Once the advanced tech cards are made, they're then dropped onto a belt that comes back up the bus and fed into these into these warehouses here to then be put into this train. So at the moment we have 70 of them in, in here. Uh, it's it's not enough, but as I say, it's, there's, a, there's a, a problem with supply at the moment, but they will eventually flow up the belt and go into the train here. From the train, they can then be sent over to um, the science area over here, where they'll be dropped off with everything else here. And I've put in an extra belt to bring them across here and put them into the uh, in, into the research machines over here. And at the moment, it looks like our research has stalled. Um, yes, because this is an advanced tech card research. 
and we've run out of advanced tech cards, so we're just simply not making them fast enough. Hopefully upping that uh, rate we're bringing in the Holmium plates, no, the Holmium cables will help a bit. Let's have a look down on Norvis to see how that's going. Okay, so yeah, we can see over here, the plate, the, the Holmium cables are coming through at a rate of one blue belt. They are then be and, and being uh, and being fed up into the train. Because I've now put that up to requesting 5,000 at a time, we're going to be get, trying to get large, huge quantities of them into the train. And well, how, how, high, how high do they stack? Let's have a look. They stack up to 50 each, so the 5,000 we've asked for is 100 stacks, which is actually only one train load. That's not not too bad. I think we, should, we may well be okay with that. Uh, as you can see, they're still trickling through. But when, so when, as the next train comes in, we'll then start loading them into that one as well. Maybe with all of this, we'll actually start getting a decent amount of the uh, of, of the cables available up there and start being able to make some an actual decent amount of science. But we shall see. The other concern is how well the supply of them is going to hold up. We are making the Holmium cables over here in, uh, no, down here, in, in quantity. There is, as you can see, there is a, a, a warehouse that's got uh, 52 stacks in, uh, but there's also a full train here. They're coming through at a solid uh, solid blue belt from here, so I think this is probably okay. We do seem to have just about enough. Um, I'm wondering whether I should put in an additional belt down here, carrying them over and putting them into the warehouse. But I have a suspicion that these machines are not actually kicking out a full blue belt each. And so if I do, we'll just have two half belts coming down. Yes, looking at the numbers here, it takes one plastic bar to make one Holmium cable. But we've also got the uh, productivity boost of... 32%. So we could take so for a, for a solid belt of the plastic coming in, we could produce a belt and a third of um, of these coming back out again. So maybe the answer is actually just to upgrade these to green belts all the way uh, down down here, and it'll run a little bit quicker, but while still keeping this at a, at a manageable level. We'll 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 see. So yes, this was mostly quite easy to put together. The only difficult parts was making making some of the intermediates need to be done on site. And as I say, bringing up the Holmium cables and the beryllium poles, and that's allowed me to also get them onto the uh, onto the system over here. So I think. Have I actually done it? No, I haven't yet fed the beryllium poles into the uh, into the belts that go up here, which I would would like to do at some point because we are still making beryllium poles up here, um, or aeroframe poles as I think they're actually known. Um, so I'd like to stop doing that. So that's another thing I need to implement. I think there was there was one other thing on this belt that's being made up here that shouldn't shouldn't be as well. So yeah, oh, here we go. The uh, the aeroframe bulkheads are also being made on the uh, on the on the tower here. Now it's not the end of the world that they're being made here because this is for making machines for infrastructure rather than for making science so the throughput tends to be a lot lower but even so I would like to get rid of these machines and start bringing them up from the ground because it is more efficient and then therefore obviously significantly better so if I can bring those up on a, on, on, a, on a belt up here and feed them in in the appropriate place it would make me a little bit happier I should also give thanks to Mark for um, providing the uh, the bio scrubbers on the belt on the belt on, on the bus over here he set up the uh, the station up here to bring that's bringing in bio scrubbers because well last time I tried messing around with one of his trains and trying to get biological stuff delivered somewhere it didn't go so well I um, I ended up breaking the uh, the train system a little bit for uh, trying to get the all, all the biological ingredients in to come in over here for the uh, for the productivity modules and Mark had to come in and fix it for me but this is now running quite nicely we are Still short of the um, of the of the vitamin lange extract, but that's because this is this is meant to be a low priority area. So we'll try and keep the science going as much as possible. But if we have an excess, we can feed it over to here, and we can turn the we can then turn it into the modules. And Mark has also increased the numbers that we're trying to make some of the modules to. So we're now trying to build up to 250 tier six modules, and still only uh, 50 uh, tier seven. And that's so we can we can start using these a little bit more. So we don't we don't want to go out upgrading absolutely everything to tier six productivity modules because. They are still really, really expensive. Not, not, not least in the um, in the, in the Vita extract that we seem to. That seem, that it's weird that the the lowest tier of the Vita products that it's using seems to be the one that we're having the most trouble with. But we are, and so um, so yeah. What, what can you do? Um, so over here, yes, we, we would like we, we'd like to we'd like to be able to upgrade some of the most expensive things up to tier six. So maybe actually we should be putting these in some of the some of the intermediates like the the Holmium cables and the um, the Iridium beams and things because those are things that are ripping through enormous quantities of the um, of the exotic resources, and those are things that we don't seem to have particularly large numbers of. Oh look, some extract has just arrived. So now we can start making some more of these modules, and they'll gradually trickle through, and we can make, and we can start making the higher tier ones uh, eventually, like this. Still on the subject of science, I've done some upgrades to the uh, the matter science production because I noticed it was it was pitifully slow, and we were we, we, we could do with a lot more of it. Um, and I've noticed now that the the upgrades I've done are 
Big apparently insufficient, but I've, I've put massive, massive speed upgrades on all of these um, research servers by putting in this beacon here and by putting in modules into them all. Uh, so now this is now running at plus 380%, so it's running at nearly five times its normal speed, and that has enabled it to have all kinds of input crises. We now have shortages certainly of these data cards, the ones that should be on the bottom of here, and I don't think these two would keep up if we managed to increase that one. I did put in a couple of extra machines for the magnifying glass data because we had a shortage of those. So, yeah, two more machines here. These are not affected by the uh, by the beacon because they don't take modules. They aren't affected by beacons and modules at all. You just need to put in huge numbers of these machines. But that's that's fine, I guess. Um, so I need to put in, obviously, need to put in a lot more of these because this is the main, main uh, limiting factor at the moment. Although... Actually, no, I take it back. The limiting factor is how quickly we can get rid of this scrap, which is interesting. Um, so, yeah, we have rather a lot of scrap being generated at the moment because uh, we've been, because my, because the material science has kicked in. Uh, maybe when this calms down a little bit and the material science goes back to sleep, then we'll be able to sort things out a little bit. Ca things will be able to catch up. I'm not sure. But in, in, in the meantime, it might be worth trying to put, trying to do some belt side balancing. But I could do it, actually, I could do it right up here somewhere and, and just do, do, yeah, do a side balance up here somewhere. But yeah, it, it's problematic. And also, actually, there's quite a lot of things that are just side loading along here. So that might not be the best idea because then we'll just fill up all of these with dead batteries when there's just too much scrap trying to come out. So let's not do that. Let's just say that um, maybe we need to look at the scrap disposal and go, hmm, this seems to be, this seems to be problematic. But anyway, as I was saying, yes, I put in some extra belts down here, extra uh, machines in down here. Now, and looking at this one, we we do have, yeah, the, the problem here, it does appear to be largely the scrap disposal. So maybe once we've got, got that sorted out and fixed, it doesn't help that all of these machines are dumping onto the same side of the belt. I could come along here and if I do um, this and switch that one over to drop on, on, on the near side, it will then be able to immediately dump all of this out and this, this machine can now start running again. There's loads of room on the near side of the belt so that's going to help a bit, at least until it clogs up along here on the other side as well and, and, and just makes the problem ev even worse for ev everywhere. So I don't know if that's an, actually a good idea but it will help things a little bit in the short term around here. The other ones I think I'm just going to need to put straight up, straight up put in more machines along here. But the reason this has started working again is because we now have more of the uh, pressure release data and the fire data because Mike has been busy as well. So if you remember over here, we have the, uh, yeah, here we go, the, this is the, the pressure, what, what's it actually called, pressure containment data, I think, yes, pressure containment data. This is being made, and you can see here, this is this is why we have so much so much of a scrap problem at the moment, because all of the material science has kicked in and is just producing absolute tons of it, and yeah, we have three belts to take it away from here, but apparently that doesn't seem to be enough. I mean, over here, you can see we've got a full, sol or practically a solid belt of scrap coming down here. It then goes into a, uh, a sortimetron here that puts it all onto the middle one, unless there's too much of it, in which case it goes onto the outer ones, which is sort of fine. There's the same thing happens here again, and we're trying to cram through more scraps been brought through from other constructions. Follow it down, 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 and then we see, we see that we have... Well, actually, this is, this is slightly less bad than I thought. It's actually only a belt and a half of scrap coming out here. Does that mean there's even more being put in from other facilities along the way? There's none coming in there. There's, oh, there's a load of... Um, Maybe it's just because the, the uh, material has caught up a bit, and so we're not getting quite as much being kicked out now. And so, so maybe maybe things will, will return to normal. But in the meantime, there is a struggle over here to produce the huge quantities of the uh, negative of the uh, pressure containment data, and that was originally being being gated behind behind having enough of these um, iridium iridium girders coming in, and they were being made here. We've stopped doing that because that's wrong. As again, we're making making intermediates in space is not what we want to do. But this was it was originally being done up here. Uh, we've moved it all away from here, so we've cut off the um, cut off the belts that are feeding the iridium in, so that that won't happen anymore. And Mike has put in an additional station down somewhere. Okay, interesting. He's put in a station here that is bringing iridium, um, bringing iridium girders in, and those are being fed in. So does that mean he has another one somewhere up higher for the? Yes, he's got another one here for the um, iridium bearings, and then possibly another one for the iridium bulkheads even further up. Um, that's interesting. Uh, it feels like an odd way to do things, but I know Mike is always all about doing odd things. So presumably that does that mean over here? Yes, he's got even more transfer stations over here. So he's. Once again, right, yes. This is this is Mike's weird system where he brings everything up in a single train to here, which unloads into the into this warehouse, then gets sorted out into separate trains around here, uh, which can then take it away from here. So it, 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 it's weird. I've always said it's weird. I still think it's weird. But it does work, so eh, I'm not going to complain too much, I guess. Uh, but yes, this now means that the uh, the bearings and the girders are being brought up here. This means if he needs any other things to be brought up, he is going to struggle a bit because the outputs of this warehouse are now 
kind of full. Um, I guess the answer would be to remove this one and have the trains unload slightly less quickly. But yeah, it could, could be could be problematic later. Anyway, uh, yes, the, the Iridium Intermediates are now being brought up here to the stations, uh, trains over here, and they can then be brought over here to be made into science. And the system does seem to be keeping up. If we find my tra my train that's getting the um, the Intermediates, here we go. We are still short, still a bit short of the um, of the pressure containment data, but it is gradually filling up, and we've had a train come and go and take enough of it over down to the Matter Science that this has started working down here. And as you can see, we've got quite a lot of it still stored in here and in here, so this should be okay for a good while yet. Oh, and it turns out there was another problem with the uh, with the, with the uh, material sciences being made as well. He, they, there was a shortage of the uh, of the of these things, the material science testing packs, and this was down to a shortage of imosite crystals. So Mike and Tristan sort of decided to tag team together and and, and fix the um, or sort out the the imosite crystal train system over here. We still seem to have a shortage of imosite crystals, but you know Taras is is doing is playing catch up. So I'm sure it, it'll hopefully get there eventually. Um, but there, there was a train that came from here that goes down to Norvis with the crystals and also over to the over to the station over there with the crystals and I believe this works in the same way that one of the other trains does and it's about to disappear so I can't look at it anymore and the Imosite train now works in basically the same way that the Holmium and Beryllium trains up in space work so as you can see here we've got if we look at this this train it works by first going to the Beryllium ingot pickup which is over in the spaceport always the same place it's there sitting there at the moment waiting to be needed somewhere else it fills up then once it's filled up it will try to go to a Beryllium ingot drop-off if this station has activated itself then this will be a Beryllium ingot drop-off station so it will come here drop them off and then go um, and then trying and then try to go to Norvis down which is this station here this station is also called Norvis down which is confusing but it, it works for this system and I'll explain that I'll explain the whys and wherefores of that in a moment because it is fairly complicated. And then it'll then it'll go. Oh, this station doesn't exist, so it'll go back to Nor. It'll go try to go to Norvis. It'll go. Oh, that station doesn't exist, so it'll go back to Beryllium Ingot pickup. If anywhere down on the ground requires um, Beryllium Ingots, then it'll go to it, it'll it won't go to Beryllium Ingot drop off because this station will be deactivated. It'll go down the space elevator. It'll go to Beryllium Ingots from space to drop off. Then it'll go back up the space elevator and then go back to do the pickup. So the funny thing we've done there are two funny things we've done here. One is that the train doesn't leave when it's full and there's an available station. It leaves when it gets a circuit condition saying hey somewhere would like Beryllium and that and so these these areas will both this area and down on the ground will both send out a signal on the on the red network saying hey we need some beryllium which will trigger trigger the train to leave here the second bit of funny business is having this station here for Norvis called Norvis down um, because this means that the the train will then go to if the train is parked here it will be able to see this station but if it's anywhere else in the factory it won't be able to because it can't get to this station from the opposite direction so if it's anywhere else in the factory it will go to the actual real downstream station the one that takes it to uh, down station the one that goes down the space elevator which is why it's able to go down if, if, if any is required on the ground but if it's parked here, then it will go to this one. It'll go, oh, that was easy, and then it'll have skipped this. It'll have skipped going down the elevator, so it will then skip these two because those stations don't exist, and go back to Beryllium Ingot pickup. So it's a bit convoluted, but it's a nice way of allowing the train to go to either a station in space or a station on the ground, depending on which one actually requires the um, the Beryllium Ingots at the time. We could put it, and we can put in more of these Beryllium Ingot drop-off stations if we want to, as long as the train doesn't get overloaded and too busy to to actually get to all of the different stations. Then having then going to both the ones in space and the ones on the ground with the same train will work quite nicely. This was of course one of Tristan's designs. I think I've talked about it before, but it was long enough ago that I think it was worth going over it again. Speaking of trains and Tristans, I talked last week in the in the videos about how we were getting this big uh, congestion in the in the train system up here, and it was it was there were too many trains trying to travel through basically this area, probably from about here to about maybe maybe here. And so we wanted to find some ways to take some of the pressure off, and maybe we could put a train, to, a, a tracks going all the way down here and joining in here. Maybe we needed another bridge going through up here, but I don't think that would really help because there's already one up here, and so on. Um, and so we've made, and so we, I came up with a couple of little ideas that Tristan has now implemented. One was to put in this tiny little piece of track here that allows a train that's coming along here to go out into this area, and then to complete that, put in this piece of track that allows a train that's coming coming in that comes in here to then come out over here. And that means that any trains that want to go down to this area, down to the these um, the, the space space handover area, can now instead of coming up here around this way and down again, they can just drop through this area, which saves a bit of congestion in this area, the area up here. And I think will make quite a big difference. Now we haven't seen any horrific train jams since that happened, since that was implemented. Part of that is because Tristan has fixed the signalling up here a, a week and a bit ago. But also we do see every every so often we do see a train come through this area. Let's watch this one. 
like this. So that train has, it came down from the north, but has now come through this area. So it's, it's avoided this, this bit of con junction up here, and so has that one. So there is, there, that has, I think, helped a bit in, in, uh, to, to bring them away from this area in order, in order to, you know, just pull the traffic off to a different part of the, um, a different part of the, uh, the system. We have also seen s at least some trains going down the other shortcut that Tristan put in, which is this one. And this goes on a diagonal very, very deliberately, because that means that for a train that's coming along here, it is shorter to come down here, down the diagonal, and through here and, and down this way, than it would be to come across here and down. So again, it alleviates the number of trains trying to get through this junction and also the, the, the bits in the middle. And as I say, bet between those, th those we've had a couple of fixes made, d implemented in there, and it does seem to have prevented any more train jams happening. Um, I don't know how much of that is down to improving the signalling up here, and how much is down to putting in the shortcuts over here, but it does seem to have worked. I also noticed there's another train coming through here, coming around the top way which is another uh, roundabout route to avoid going through the junction down here. So yeah, we've put in a number of little little tweaks here and there that will hopefully alleviate some of the pressure on, on this area that's right in the middle of our, our, our rail systems and, and, and take, as I say, just, just take some of the pressure off. There is a line that goes all the way around the bottom here um, and then doesn't go anywhere. Does it go? Oh, it does go all the way down here and then up up here. So in theory, a train that wants to get to the intermediates area could come down over here, all the way around here and back up again, but it probably won't because why would it? If we get absolutely desperate, and I don't, we, we certainly aren't at that stage yet, but if we did get very, very desperate, we could pull up some of the track in the middle of here so that trains are no longer allowed to pass through this middle area and have to go all the way around the outside. I think that will lead to a lot of trains travelling much, much further distances, which could lead to logistics throughput problems, but it would remove the jams in the middle. Um, that said, at the moment, not a problem, so we're definitely not going to do that. And we'll just keep an eye on it and see, and see, because it's not just absolute deadlocks that are the problem. It's if there are too many trains trying to go through the area and, and they're all getting slowed down and having to stop and wait. That could also be a problem as well. I guess we just need the stuff that's been announced for uh, Factorio 1. whatever, 1.5 or 2 or whatever they're calling the, uh, the new release with the bridges and, and, and so on. So we'll be able to have more main lines that would just go over the top of all of the factory buildings or something. That would be amazing, but obviously we're not going to be able to do that just yet. He's also sorted out the iron mine trains, so we have, uh, for, the, for, for the iron drop-off areas, we have the, um, I'll run through briefly what, how, we, how we're sorting out the iron, because I know it's a bit weird and complicated. So, there are three, three sources of iron. There are iron mines on the planet, the nice standard vanilla way of getting iron. There is the core pulverisation, which is the highest priority, because we need to use that up in order to keep all the rest of the core fragment processing systems, everything running. And then there is the ore that's being brought in from Oliran, which is uh, essentially unlimited because it's being produced from crushing uh, iron core fragments, and so we're going to get enormous, enormous amounts of it and never have any problems there, hopefully, theoretically. And so the way we've got it set up is that we park the trains from the iron here, and that means that this station will call them in as the top priority. They'll come in here, they'll unload, and we'll use that iron ore as the top priority. We also then, if, if we run out of trains coming from the high priority iron drop-off areas, we will then also call in trains from iron mines. And this is the bit that Tristan has edited recently. So we've got the ones that go to the iron mines, we'll go to... Okay, they, then, then it's not doing what I thought. I thought he put in another place for the iron trains to wait to make sure they didn't ever um, cause jams. Because we were, getting, we were having problems because the uh, trains from the iron mines would come in here, they would unload, and then they would never leave because the iron mines were never... As it went, uh, took forever to fill back up again. So th these ones that are waiting at iron mines should have other instructions on them to make sure they, they go somewhere else. So here we go, here's one. So there's an iron mine buffer, so it's the other train hasn't been reprogrammed. So this train needs to have an iron, uh, iron mine buffer added in here, so it goes there before uh, to wait to go off to iron mine as well. So, um, so yeah, they're, okay, it's, it's only been partially fixed, but when it has been, that should solve that problem. And then the third part is the trains that come over from the Oliran drop. There's now four of them, which are all queued up here because we've got, as I say, we've got loads and loads of iron ore available from that. And those will wait here. And there is there are circuit conditions on the on the um, boxes over here to make sure that these will only load in the supply that's coming in from space if we're very if we run if we start to run low on the stuff that's coming in from the priority. And since there's two trains of iron ore parked over here from the priority station, it looks like that right now we have more iron ore than we know what to do with. So we just need to work our way through it all, and then eventually we'll, um, we'll, we'll probably be using it up fast enough, but worst case, we'll turn some of it into landfill. I hope we don't need to. Where are you going? That's very strange. The other part of sorting out the, Oli the trains from Oli Rands, apparently he's putting a stacker over here. 
we will in theory in the future we will in theory be bringing large quantities of material down down this space elevator from other other planets so as we start to ship in iron and maybe copper well i say maybe i'll talk about that in the next video on monday but maybe certainly maybe copper um, and anything else that we bring, just bring in as the, as, as the raw resource from from space. Maybe stone if we start to have problems with it. All those sort of things. Uh, we'll have lot. We'll have various trains along here passing it across in exactly the same way. And so we need a stacker to allow us to put in to bring in lots and lots of different trains that are asking for the iron ore. So we've got we've got four of them that are trying to pick up iron ore from here. And obviously there isn't room for four trains in this station. And so Tristan's put in a big stacker up here. This will be easily expanded if we need more. And he's also cut the rail on the way in here. So we've got yeah. Um, Weird things have been done with the rail here, um, but let's not worry about it too much. We've got a nice big stacker on the way in here that's going to allow us to stock stockpile all the trains that are waiting to come down to the uh, the stations down here. And so we can put in, as I say, additional... Uh, we can have as many iron trains coming in as we want. We can put in another station here for copper, stone, whatever else. All, all those sort of things that are being brought down from here. Uh, this looks weird because it looks like these two rails should be joined up, but I don't... But, yeah, obviously they, they shouldn't be because they're... This is a down rail and this is a, um, this is a left rail, so... Yeah, they shouldn't be joined. Tristan's also put a little bit of effort into modernising some of the stations, so we're now down to single warehouses here, here, and here for the uh, for the copper for the copper um, smeltery area. Um, now, interestingly, he did there was there were four that he had. This was a previously a five warehouse station, and we had an enormous amount of copper in, in the five warehouses because they weren't limited. They're off. They often are when they're five warehouse stations, but this one wasn't. So he had to put in all of these additional buildings over here to stockpile the copper out of the warehouses to allow him to pull them up and drop it down to the being just the single warehouse design. Uh, we are now uh, we, we've got a pretty Got a, yeah, we've got circuit conditions here that are stopping the warehouse filling up from these, at least until these guys empty completely. Um, how, how has this been done? I suspect it's... Okay, if there's less than 16,000 in all of the warehousery, then you can pass through. Um, but this warehouse is currently at 51,000. We're loading it up as quickly as we can out of this storehouse. Uh, but once these start to empty, we'll then feed it in from here. And we can probably then remove... The, once, once these have emptied, we can then remove these uh, conditions across here. I don't know how many places there are that are actually requesting copper in uh, in plate form. So it might take a little while until we get through all of this. Um, most, most stations now will, will be using copper ingots. But... It sort of doesn't matter. We've got it all stockpiled here. We can we can pass it through as as and when required. And it's not as if it's yeah okay. There's a certain amount of it tied up in these warehouses, but it doesn't really matter all that much. It's just copper. Copper's fairly cheap, despite what I'm going to be saying on Monday. Last week I was talking about how we seem to have a shortage of rare metal, which is a w very very strange thing to have a shortage of, um, because it, it, for most of the game it's been this 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 thing that's come out of the core processing. We've gone, what am I going to do with all this rare metal? This is ridiculous. Somebody take it away from me and turning it all into landfill. But now we're actually getting through enough of it that we started to have problems. Part of it was uh, was throughput, and part of it was was supply issues. But as you can see from the graph here, we now have loads of it, and that's because. We're no longer using the system that used to be in over here. There was there was some rare metal drop off and pick up trains in here. That's why there's loads of gaps in this belt and uh, and um, obviously an, an empty area here in the middle of the base where where it looks like there was probably something before because this was a sort of a first generation system. It was using um, electric furnaces. It was using normal chemical plants and it was rubbish. Have a look at last week's videos if you want to see what it was like back then. So, Mark has now upgraded that. We've now got this shiny new system up here, which is using our current current uh, design principles. We've got advanced chemical plants, we've got advanced furnaces. Uh, okay, we've still got pulverizers and uh, electrolysis plants and filtration plants up here for making the earlier stages. But, still, the point is that this is now running much, much better, much, much faster. We now have 51,000 rare metals in the warehouse here. The system has caught up. And so this is good for two reasons. And they're both sort of linked to the fact that we've modernised it. The first one is that the system now runs much, much faster. Because each of these machines are capable of running at speed of 8 by standard. And then they've now been, and they've had an extra 200% added in by the speed modules in the beacon down here. So these are running at a uh, speed of 24, whereas the other machines were running at a, probably a speed of about two and maybe maybe four because there's probably a, a, a level one a tier one beacon next to them same with the advanced chemical plants these are now much much faster we can rip through the, uh, the the raw rare metals turn it into the enriched rare metals and then into the actual rare metal ingots much much more quickly and, and effectively and the second part is because we've upgraded it to the top to the, to the new level we can now fill it put in so many more um of these of these productivity modules oh there's a train going um and so, so this means that now we're getting for, for the on the rare metals we're getting a 32% a boost of productivity there and a 40% boost there, which is that's that's fantastic. As you can see on screen, I'm going to put up the numbers for what that actually means on a mathematical level. But yes, we're getting a lot more out for what we're putting in compared to what we were getting before. 
And so, that has short solved the problem of both the processing speed being too slow by using much, much faster machines and, and more and more speed modules, and also the fact that the supply was insufficient by putting in all of the productivity modules and getting a significant boost to the amount of, amount that comes out for the for the same amount going in. So we so this has solved both of the problems in one one fell swoop, and also um, I'm, I have every confidence that Mark has checked this system up here and and, and checked the ratios and made sure that this is now going to be producing the uh, what is it the hydrogen chloride fast enough to keep all of this running as long as we keep the supply of stone um, happy and yeah the supply of stone seems to be happy we're not calling for another train at the moment I think there's lots of there's lots of train there's lots of stone uh, available in various places around the around the factory so I think as soon as this runs down below whatever the uh, the limiting factor is or the limiting level is it'll trigger and bring in some more stone oh some more uh, raw rare metals have arrived yes this system seems to be running very very nicely and it has solved all of our problems there we will keep an eye on it, of course, up here, and make sure that the supply coming in from the core processing is sufficient. Um, at the moment, we seem to, yes, we have a full warehouse over here, so it seems to be absolutely fine. The problem is, as of right now, it is, it, the problem is sorted. We are making landfill out of it once again, which seems like a bit of a shame. Maybe we should have multiple warehouses over here like we have with the uranium. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. It, feel, it feels like stockpiling too much of it seems like a bad idea but also not stockpiling enough of it also seems like a bad idea but then having a smaller stockpile means you realize there's a problem sooner rather than waiting until it becomes an absolute crisis i, I but then also but on the other hand wasting the resources also seems like a shame hey i'm i'm not i'm not sure we have discovered that we have a ridiculous amount of um, of landfill uh, now, and Mark has spent a not insignificant amount of bot effort uh, filling in some lakes somewhere. Um, I'm not sure which one it was he's been filling in. Maybe it's this one down here. Uh, he's also been plastering a lot, putting a lot more uh, flooring down over here. I looked at the map, and there were about there were probably literally ten thousand bots flying around. And I went, "This is great." I was trying to I wanted to do some building of stuff, and now I can't because all the bots are busy. So <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of oh, it's probably here. All of this area has been landfilled, even though it doesn't doesn't necessarily need to be yet but it's a but it's a way of getting rid of some of the excess uh, landfill because because the system filled up which is a crazy crazy problem to have this plentiful supply of rare metals has also enabled us to bring more rare metals up to space, which are being stockpiled here. I think I talked about this a little bit last time. Uh, and Mark has now started bringing them over to Big Rid, which is this ship, um, because he needs rare metals over on Big Rid as well. I forget what for, but they're definitely needed over there and in, 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 in reasonable quantities for one of the uh, biological processes. We'll be looking at that a bit more on Monday as well. Um, so yeah, he's going to be taking a load more of those over. And so, I think this is this is enough talking for this episode. I've been uh, it's, it's gone over the half hour of what I normally aim for. So, um, on but there's and there's still plenty of stuff to talk about on Monday, where I should be uh, touching on uh, some of the upgrades that have been made out for, for more resource generation. We've made some big, big improvements on. Well, I, I'm part. I've made a mess on Agnea, which I shall show you next time. And um, uh, Mark has made some also made some improvements on on Big Rid. This, this is help, helping uh, helping with some of the supplies and some of these weird biological things that we're trying to get hold of. And so we'll talk about all of that on Monday. So come along then and uh, for the. Video. Video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on it or anything else that goes on on the channel. Tuesday will be the XCOM stream as ever, where um, where I'm going to carry on doing doing the plot missions because I've got to the point where I feel like the Avatar project is not is not a danger. The chosen are mostly sorted out. I can I can do some plot missions without having to worry about other things too much now. So it's a, yes, time to advance the plot. Then on Thursday we'll be carrying on with a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about today. I don't think there's going to be any more science packs being made on Thursday, but there will be some big improvements needed because we are still quite short of quite a lot of the more advanced ingredients. So over here it's still showing a shortage of, of iron. I might take a look at that. Um, and steel plates as well. Um, but these, the, um, but they're mostly over here with all of the exotic materials over here. We seem to have some serious shortages, especially of the um, holmium and the iridium and the vul vulcanite and the cryonite. So we'll need to need to go and find out why those are problematic, sort them out, get them flowing better, more, harder, faster, stronger, all of that sort of stuff. That's going to be Thursday's mission. There should be another uh, tutorial video coming out on Wednesday, so keep an eye out for that if you're a supporter. It'll come out the week after if you're if you're not. And there's always a little something trying to come out on Fridays as well to keep to keep to keep the channel busy. So uh, there should be something something there as well. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed, following the channel, every, all of that sort of stuff. Follow me on Twitch or Kick or YouTube, whatever, all of those sort of things, uh, so you don't miss out on anything that's going on on the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time. Bye bye.